caged citizens against enforced disappearances. We call this video Top Cop Spreads Dangerous Ideas About Versailles, Christians, Shiites, and Parliament. In an earlier video, we outlined the evidence about Top Cop DCP Awaluddin Jadid, which led to Hakam, the National Human Rights Institution, to conclude that the police special branch, Bukit Aman, abducted and disappeared Amri Chekmat and Raymond Cole. In that video, we mentioned a speech Awaluddin gave in November 2016 at a seminar titled Youth Against Terrorism. The audience was mainly university students, but also included religious and government leaders. Here we highlight six things he said in that speech. One, he said Bursay, which we know to be the Malaysian movement for free and fair elections and democracy, should not be called Bursay, which means clean. It should instead be called Yellow Group. He said Bursay's political polemics were causing social conflicts and could lead to terrorist acts. Noting the Bursay rally, which was to take place three days later, he said that public protests are out of the norm. He said those who promote public protests are extremists. He said Bursay's demands were misplaced because we already had clean elections, clean government, and fair treatment of Sabah and Sarawak. He was sad that Bursay supported liberalism. We note that two weeks later, the police arrested and detained and interrogated Bursay chairperson Maria Chin Abdullah for 10 days. Two, he said, while we strive to keep ISIS, also known as the Islamic State, out of Malaysia, we must also deal with other equally important enemies. He said he was going around Malaysia, meeting muftis and urging them to focus on the Shiite threat. He said nearly all the states of Malaysia have recognized Shiites as enemies. He was sorry the Mufti of Penang was soft on Shiites. He said even the police, civil and Sharia courts and Trajaya, the seat of government, had been infiltrated by Shiites. He said wars in Arab countries are caused by Shiites. He said his audience had the responsibility to oppose Shiites. He said Shiites are not Muslims. He was happy that Indian Muslims have their own mosques, forbid Malays from joining them for prayers, and follow the separation rules set by state religious authorities. He was happy they lock up their mosques after their prayers. He was happy that if one of their members married a Malay, they kick the offender out of their mosques. He was sorry that Shiites no longer keep to themselves. He was upset that they have become bold, even make police reports. He worried that a leader may arise among them and act to destabilize Malaysia. He was sad that our Shiites do not have guns, because if they did, the police could quickly act against them. 3. He was sorry the Registrar of Societies has registered some Sunni Muslim societies without approval from his division. He said that previously prior approval by the special branch was required, but now approval by Jakim or the Home Ministry is enough. He was happy that registration requests by Shiites and by Malay Christians continued to be denied. 4. He said Christian activity to convert Muslims out of Islam accelerated after Barisan National lost its two-thirds majority in Parliament in 2008. He said that after 2008, churches insisted on using the word Allah, whereas previously they did not. He said Christians were educating, training and funding Malay converts to do the work of Christianization. He said they worked with AIDS victims, single mothers and the homeless. He said they didn't work among other sectors of society because if they did, they would be bashed up. He said many ex-Muslims had become Christian pastors. He said the special branch is working with some Muslim NGOs to trace them and fight back. He said proselytization is terrorism. 5. He was said that in 2008, Barisan National failed to secure a two-thirds majority in parliament. He said the police were praying for pass not to return to Pakatan Rakyat. He said pass is very important for strengthening and for returning power to Malay Muslims. 6. He was sad that the government had abolished the Internal Security Act. He said this made it much more difficult for the police to conduct what he called preventive detentions. He said therefore, the police, the government and Muslims in general need to work together 
to overcome the threats posed by Shiites and Christians.